Hey everybody, I'm David on Earth. Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to review the Flextail Tiny Repeller S. Stick around, there will be something you might learn here. Now I know there's a lot of videos out there that review this, but what I found is that every video out there is lacking in some form or another. I had to look all over the place to find all the information about this thing. But hopefully this one video will tell you everything you need to know and maybe some things you haven't learned on others. Now I'm testing this thing in the Upper Peninsula, Michigan, which is known for its mosquitoes. We have mosquitoes here that will carry you away and eat you alive. In fact, I was on, a, on another trail yesterday where one guy was turning around because the mosquitoes were, quote, eating them alive. So, it's a great place to test this thing. So what is a Flextail Tiny Repeller? Well, it's three tools in one, actually. It's a mosquito repellent, it is a battery bank, and it is a lantern, a light. So let's check out the features. Well, it only weighs 5.4 ounces, which is 153 grams. Now, if you add the case to it is 9.9 .9 ounces, which is 280 grams. It has a magnetic base on it, so you can mount it to anything metal. It's rechargeable with a type C connector. And they say it's waterproof with a rating of IPX5. So what does that mean? I had to go look it up. IPX5, uh, you look at the last two letters, X and 5. Well, the X talks about the uh, uh, protection against solid materials like dust and dirt. If there's an X there, it means it doesn't have enough data to determine what exactly the level of protection is. So the X essentially means nothing here. The 5 in the IPX5 rating is the waterproofness of it. Now here's how they tested it with the 5. They use a jet spray at 4.4 PSI for 3 minutes, which is about 12.5 liters per minute. So what does that mean to you and I? It means that, you know, in the rain, it does okay in the rain, it does okay in a heavy mist, but you can't submerge this thing because it's not protected against that. So if you happen to drop this in a pool of water, get it out real quickly. Or just, you know, just don't do that. It has a carabiner clasp on here that swivels either way. So you can hang this thing on your shoulder strap like I have it here. You can hang it on your belt. Maybe you can hang it on your ridge line for your hammock. Or if, you, if you've done what I've done here, You've created this little loop. Just take a string, just take a bit of cord here, put a couple bowlins on the end, and you can strap this on one side, hang it over a tree or a branch or anything you like, and then you can hang it from just about anywhere. Bonus tip from David. It also has a quarter inch thread on the bottom to so you can mount it to your tripod. And you can put it on a table, maybe you can put it outside of your tent. Maybe if you put on a larger tripod, you can put it in the middle of camp. So there's lots of uses for this thing. It's very handy, very convenient, a lot of great little features. So let's talk about the mosquito repellent feature in this. So the first thing to understand is that it's a repellent. It doesn't kill mosquitoes. It just repels them. It makes it so they don't want to be around you. And how it works is that it heats up. There's a heater element in here and even at its high setting, it's still not hot to touch and it heats up these mats that are in here. We'll talk about them a little bit later. And that's what radiates the repellent and keeps the mosquitoes away. Now this thing heats in two different directions. One on each side, see this and this one. So that's where it radiates from in two different directions. So it's kind of 360 protection. It says 360 on the website. It's, I would say 360-ish. Now there's two repellent modes in this thing. I think you find on the website this, that it says that there's three. Well, there's only two. Now you activate this by double clicking on the left button and it will give you a green light. Well, the green light means is that it's in camp mode and it's effective up to 10 feet, a 10 feet circle around you. And it takes about 50 seconds for it to heat up to 110 degrees Celsius, which is 230 degrees Fahrenheit. Now on a full charge, the battery will last about 10 hours in this mode. And then if you click the left button one more time, you'll be in outdoors mode, which is the highest mode. 
and that brings it up to 165 degrees centigrade which is 329 degrees Fahrenheit and it takes about two minutes for it to get up to that temperature and with a full battery it will last about seven hours so what are the advantages of this tiny repel over like sprays or lotions well with this you don't get any kind of direct chemicals on your skin and you don't have to reapply it and there's no bottle to leak out in your pack it won't get sticky or oily it won't get in your eyes because you don't have to spray it it's odorless to humans and over the long term say several years it's cheaper than buying bug spray or bug lotion there's less trash produced by this and it won't damage your clothing like DEET does now let's talk about the mats that are in this flex tail. Now you can put one or two of them in. Usually I recommend two because that's when you're going to get the most effectiveness out of this unit. Now you can buy these in packs of 10 or even up to like a thousand. You know, if you have a small army or something. Then let me demonstrate how to put them into the unit. Uh, but they come uh, packed individually, not by two. You just tear them out of the pack and you slide them into the slots. Pretty simple stuff. Now these last up to four hours. Now the chemicals that are in these things, <laughs> I've got to read this here because I don't know how to pronounce these kind of chemical things. Prolethrin is one of them, and Meprofluthrin is the other one. Ew. Those are the two active ingredients. Now prolethrin, let me tell you about that. It is an insecticide, it is non-toxic to mammals. So humans, it's not toxic to us, meaning that uh, it won't cause, uh, there's no carcinogen agents in here, so it won't cause cancer. Now it's very toxic to bees and fish. So, if you're in an area where there are lots of bees pollinating and making great honey, I personally would shut the thing off. And if you're fishing, and you stand a chance of dropping one of these things maybe into the water, you probably want to, don't, don't want to take them fishing either. That's just me. You can do what you want to do, but it does, it's very toxic to fish and bees. It's low toxicity to birds, but it's very toxic to dogs. So I would not wear this, uh, like say, in a tent with a dog. Now this thing is 97% effective on mosquitoes, and it's not very effective on flies uh, at all. Now as I've been hiking and wearing this, you know, a few mosquitoes will come by me in my ears maybe, or something but not very many this is a mosquito infested area lots of mosquitoes here like I said yesterday there was a guy who uh, couldn't go any further because the mosquitoes were eating him alive but well, with me uh, just a couple of mosquitoes around me and that was it for really the whole day so to me pretty effective now these are not effective on ticks and they're not effective on a lot of other insects but for mosquitoes really effective and there's a shelf life of about three years on these mats and there are substitutes out there that are very cheap but what I found is that you use the cheap mats they don't work nearly as well as the ones you get from Flextail so if I was gonna make a recommendation to you I would say buy the ones from Flextail they're quite a bit more expensive but they're gonna work as advertised on the website Now the light feature on this flex tail is like, uh, it's a lantern. It isn't really a flashlight that beams out. It's a lantern. And it has four different modes. 50 lumens, 100 lumens, 200 lumens, and 400 lumens. And you activate it by double clicking the button on the right and then just clicking through each mode. So at the lowest setting, 50 lumens, it will operate for 60 hours on a full battery. On the highest setting, 400 lumens, it'll last for about 10 hours. Now the website mentions this breathing meditation kind of mode thing that it does, but I really don't know what that's all about. I really can't find any instructions about it. So, so if you bought this thing to meditate, I'm sorry, I can't help you out. Now for charging this unit, I mentioned before that it takes a C type connector and it's a fast charge and it charges up fully from zero to 100 in about two hours. And as it's charging, you will see the lighting indicator. And there's four little lights on there. All four lights lit up is 100% charge. And so the first light lit up is 25, then 50, then 75, then 100. The user's manual, by the way, has this backwards. 
Now, if you want to use this to charge other devices, this is a battery bank. It has 4,800 milliamp hours worth of charge on it. Of course, you will need the appropriate charging cable, which this does not come with. It only comes with a C to USB charger cable if you have, um, uh, if you're connecting it to maybe your Android device and you have a different connector on your old Android device, then you need a C to that kind of connector. But the C is one end and whatever device you're charging, you have to have the cable for that. Okay, so I didn't want to leave you with a video that ended with a statement like, work good for me. <laughs> I'd rather show you actual tests in the field and so you can see how it works for yourself. Now, the first thing you should know is that there are some inconsistencies between what's printed in their user manual and what's on their website and actually in different places on their website. So there's some in inconsistencies there you should just be aware of. I don't think it's Flextail doing anything intentional here to mislead you. I think it's just, you know, catching up with the administrative chores as you're improving the product. I'm going to write it off as that. Now, I did a test with my Galaxy 21S. So I fully charged the Flextail and my phone was at 24%. Then I plugged it in to charge my phone. It charged my phone up to 70%, and then the battery in the flex tail was exhausted. And I thought, well, maybe I just have a wrong cord, or maybe I should test this again. So that's what I did. I tested again with a different cord, just to make sure that it wasn't a cord issue. So the second time I charged it, it started at 17%, my phone, and then, you know, with a fully charged flex tail battery, and then I charged my phone and it charged up to 82%. At least with my Galaxy 21X, it's only going to charge 50, maybe 60% of your phone. So just be aware of that. It's primarily, again, for emergency purposes. It's not out there to be a big, you know, battery bank for you. So the third thing I want to talk about is how long the Flextail battery lasts when the repeller is on high. So with the Flextail battery fully charged and it on high, it lasted for six hours and 10 minutes. The information I found from Flextail said it should last seven hours. So pretty close. The next test I did was with the lamp. So I fully charged again my battery in the flex tail, and then I turned my uh, lamp on high, 400 lumens, just to see how long it would last. And it lasted for eight hours and 20 minutes. Now the user manual says it should last 10 hours. So it's a little off, but not bad. Now keep in mind this unit can be a lantern and a repeller and a battery charger all at the same time. And so all the numbers that you read in your user's manual about how long you, that they say the battery should last, it's going to be less if you're doing more than one function. So if you're doing a repeller and you're charging your phone at the same time, your battery's not going to last as long as they say, because you're doing two things at once. You're draining the battery twice as much or using two functions. Same thing if you're using three functions. So just know if you're using multi-functions, the battery is going to last less than advertised. Okay, got some mosquitoes around me this morning. Turn this on. Okay, it says a minute, no more mosquitoes. I'm going to put this right here on the dash, see what happens. Takes a minute. There's very little breeze here, just a tiny little bit. So I don't think it's going to be a factor. There's, one, there's a couple right there. You see the mosquitoes flying around it right here? There's one right on my hand. Right on my hand. I'll put it on high. The low setting was supposed to be good for 10 feet. This is supposed to be good for 30 feet on the high setting. Well, when I came up to the Jeep, I just got done hiking. And when I came up to the Jeep here, uh, they started swarming around me. Not a lot of them. You know, I've been around large swarms of mosquitoes. It wasn't that. 
it was probably like 10 or 20 mosquitoes sort of swarming around me. Uh, but now, now there's none. When I put this thing close to a mosquito, it, it goes away. He doesn't like it. That's on a high setting. There's no fan in this thing, so it just kind of radiates from here. Um, I would imagine it takes a while for the repellent to radiate far enough to have an effect. It says it heats up in 50 seconds, but it still needs time to radiate to be effective. I would imagine. And so now, when a mosquito tries to approach me, it goes away. So I'd say there's enough evidence here to believe that this thing actually works to, to uh, repel mosquitoes. You be the judge, you saw it here. So with all that testing, I have a few observations and some recommendations for you. Here we go. Now overall, all three functions act pretty close to what is advertised in their materials. Now, if you read reviews online, um, just be skeptical because uh, you want to know how they tested the unit actually, or even if they tested it at all. Some reviews out there will just say, hey, I got this yesterday and it works great. So just be cautious, you know, just be skeptical when you read reviews. Ask yourself when you're looking at the review, how did they actually test this thing? And if they didn't actually test it, or if they're not telling you exactly how they tested it, then yeah, I don't know. Take it for with a grain of salt. Number two is I wouldn't bring this on a multi-day trip unless I had a recharging source that was sufficient enough to recharge this thing because the battery's going to burn out once a day. You know, it's going to be dead by the end of the day if you're using your repeller all day. So either bring a large battery bank or bring a solar powered system with you to charge it up every day or maybe you have access to uh you know a place to plug it in but if you're on a multi-day trip you know think about the power that you're going to need to use this thing every day now i think it would be great for like car camping like uh day trips like maybe an overnighter maybe in the backyard doing a barbecue all right all great applications for this thing all right, so I appreciate you tuning in for my review of this Flextel Tiny Repeller. So I didn't get a chance to do a closing uh, segment out there in the field, so I thought I'd do it right here in the studio. If you have any experience using this Flextel, I appreciate your comments down below. I'm, I'm interested in real-world experiences with products, and so your comments will be valuable to me and to everyone who watches this. So, as always, go live like you want it. I'll see you on the trail. Hey, this is David on Earth. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. And go to the website for some deals on gear. All right, see you on the trail. Uh, very good.